Coming right up, a special edition of Straight Talk on the Aquarium of the Pacific, featuring Dr. Jerry Schubel, President and CEO of the Aquarium, as we continue our 23rd anniversary year. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by the Port of Long Beach, a leader in international trade and environmental stewardship. And the Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Scan Health Plan, for your health and independence. Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. This is the last show of our 23rd season. And you might say we're saving the best for last. Our guest for the entire show is Dr. Jerry Schubel, who is the president and CEO of the wonderful Aquarium of the Pacific here in Long Beach. Welcome back to our show, Jerry. Great to be here, Art. The aquarium is more than just a fish tank. It's much more than a fish tank. Fact, tell, us, tell us what's behind this all. That, that was the, the mandate that was given to me when I was hired. They wanted to make the Aquarium of the Pacific not only a great classical aquarium, but more than a fish tank. They wanted one that was involved in big ocean issues, that was a gathering place in downtown Long Beach that would bring people together to hear lectures, see performances, uh, musical performances, art, art exhibits, and we've worked hard to make that happen over the last... And your aquarium, our aquarium, really has a national reputation, does it not? It has an international reputation. International reputation, reputation yes. even. Well, uh, the message is that, there, I mean, visiting the aquarium, as most of you have probably done, and if you haven't, you should. It's a wonderful experience, uh, beautiful exhibits, uh, powerful exhibits, fun exhibits, uh, gift shop, restaurant, the whole ball of wax. But there's much more there than meets the eye. And uh, in this first segment, we want to talk about some of the things the aquarium is doing that are not immediately visible. The, the aquarium is the hook to get people involved thinking about these issues. But what are the big issues? All right, first of all, you're right. The aquarium, people don't come to aquariums to learn. They come to see live animals. And so that, that's the bait to get them there. And then once they're there, we can snooker them into <laughs> learning all kinds of things. They need and we're going to have some live animals in segment two. You won't want to miss it. Because there are big ocean issues that we're confronting and, and issues with freshwater. And so we try to involve the people then in these big issues. We have what's called an aquatic forum where every year we have one or two of these. We take a, a national issue that's manifested very clearly in Southern California. So we recently did one on offshore aquaculture in the Southern California Bight, and you have that report. And the one before that, we worked with the Long Beach Water Department on the drought. And um, you know, we have a remarkable water department here in Long Beach. So you have four uh, at the aquarium, and then sometimes you will publish a report summarizing uh, that. And this was on aquaculture, which means fish farming. Fish farming. Uh, and we always publish a report, and, and we always produce a document that is designed for policymakers. It's uh, two, two, four pages long so that they're apt to read it. And uh, we bring the best minds together for a day or two days or sometimes longer to deal with the issue. Besides uh, aquaculture, uh, sea level rise is a pressing problem, and there's a wonderful exhibit there of Annenberg photographs of the, the impact of sea level rise on people all over the world. The, the exhibit is called Sink or Swim and, and it had its debut at the Annenberg Photo Space for Photography and it's now at the aquarium. It will be seen by uh, over the period of time uh, which is through September 15th. It will be many hundreds of thousands of people and it's about how people are responding to sea level rise and coastal flooding around the world. Probably it, moving back from the ocean. Well, in some <laughs> in cases, some some, case. in some cases, uh, staying and, and protecting. It's ironic. Uh, some areas have too much water. Uh, we're suffering from a drought. Uh, well, we've got God wants us to keep working. <laughs> yeah, it, and it's, we, in, we have, uh, in some cases, too much uh, salt water, 
with sea level rise, and, and then with, with drought, though, we have too little fresh water. Yeah. And we have to remind people, though, if we have the same water on this planet that we had four billion years ago, and it's cycled through the hydrologic cycle through hundreds and thousands of times, right. and, and so the partitioning changes. You know, in a sense, all water is recycled. It, that's right. <laughs> and and, and in, in a very real sense, all water comes from desalination. Most of it is driven by the sun. That's what drives the hydrologic cycle. Fascinating. And I know there's a wonderful exhibit there uh, of a globe, a NOAA globe, that demonstrates uh, sea level rise. Yes, that, that globe is called Science on a Sphere. And uh, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, holds the patent to that. There are 110 of them around the world. And uh, only two aquariums in the world have these. And we have created more original content for Science on a Sphere than any of the others. You need to see that. You need to go to the aquarium, if nothing else, to see that besides the fish. But it's fascinating. It's, it is remarkable. And in addition to these stories that we've developed, you can pull down any data set from the, the Internet. And so you, in real time, you can look at a, a hurricane, a typhoon, an earthquake, a tsunami. Or even so you see weather actually in motion on the globe. Yes, it's absolutely exactly. fascinating. And I know you've worked uh, with uh, our Long Beach Water Department uh, over the years on various projects. We did the, the forum on, on drought last uh, December, and um, we worked very closely with Kevin Wadier and a number of the water commissioners. And uh, I think before the governor ever uh, made any announcements, we had come out with what we yeah. thought were quite dramatic uh, reductions that were called for, 20 percent reduction in, in water use. Uh, and you, Long Beach is very fortunate to have this water department, and Kevin Waterier has been an amazing ma general manager. And he was our guest uh, last week, and uh, he is retiring. We did a special tribute show to him, and uh, but he's, uh, he's really help build our Long Beach Water Department uh, into a nationally recognized yes. department. And he's going to be joining us at the aquarium as a member of our board of directors of our Marine Conservation Research Institute. Outstanding. Well, coming right up, we don't have many animals on the show. You actually brought a penguin the last time you were here. <laughs> this time we have jellies live here on our show. We'll be right back. At the Port of Long Beach, we're not only delivering jobs, smart ideas, and forward-thinking environmental initiatives. We're also delivering opportunity for all of Southern California. Oh, and a clearer horizon line. To learn more, go to polb.com. The Port of Long Beach, thinking outside the docks. Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo Tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo Tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo Tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo Tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo Tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. 
We're back continuing this wonderful conversation with Dr. Jerry Schubel, the president and CEO of the Aquarium of the Pacific. A million and a half visitors a year. That, that's fantastic, isn't it? That puts us in the top four in the nation. Wonderful. And uh, members. Uh, 100,000 members. And, and the number including grows true. every year. Feel you're doing your part to promote this wonderful event. And you have a board of directors of really enlightened and important civic leaders on your board. Yes, we do. And the chair of that, the board right now is John Molina, the CFO of Molina Healthcare. But we have some others from Long Beach. But, and then we have people from as far away as Texas on the board, San Francisco. Really? How did so, that happen? How do you get someone from Texas on the board? Because it's such an important institution that uh, they, they are just demanding to join this board. That's, that's great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> having the, that kind of support from the community, members, visitors, and directors, that's a triple, triple win. We have a wonderful board of, of directors. Well, among the many things uh, at the aquarium this summer are a jellies exhibit and jellies are fish that are alive and swim, and we've, Jerry has brought uh, 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 jellies here. These are moon jellies. Tell us about them. Those are moon jellies. Now, so, so, they're sea jellies, so sea jellies, some people call them jellyfish, but they're not really fish. They have no bones, no central nervous system, no brain, no lungs, and the remarkable thing like is- Like some of my students. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. And, and these have been around for more than 500 million years. They're throughout the world ocean. There are some that exist in, in lakes, in Palau, and other places. So they're remarkable organisms. And there, there's a lesson there that if you want to have a long life in a changing, or on a changing earth, be a generalist, not a specialist. Some of these actually have only one orifice that serves as both the mouth and the anus. Uh, but, but again, no brain, no central nervous system, and they're plankton. Less is more. Less is and more. They've been around That's 500 right. million years. And so far, far longer than any sharks. Uh, <laughs> they've, you know, they've outlasted dinosaurs. Well, if you like moon jellies, you'll love... Cannonball jellies. Cannonball jellies. Now, these are uh, fished for in Georgia. And they, they, this is, these are from Georgia. We've flown them here at great expense just to be on this program and to create. Chef Bustamante of Savor <laughs> created this lunch just for you. Here, here is a uh, jelly salad. And I see it has avocado and it has uh, tangerine and it has lettuce. And it also has these little things which are... <laughs> Those are cannonball jellies. Cannonball jellies. Yes. And uh, Jerry's put it on the salad, and Jerry's going to show you what you can do with this salad. Well, you can eat it, and I will have a bite. Uh, you know, this could become the new Mediterranean diet because very low in calories, uh, no, yes. no fat, no cholesterol. You're going to like this, Art. Well, uh, I'm, I'm working now, so I can't eat while <laughs> I work, but let's but, see. But I hope Jerry, you, I, I'm going to, going to take go, some. Go so for I've it. got some jellies, I've got some lettuce. <laughs> Mm, that's good. That is good. It certainly is. Well, I look forward to uh, trying it sometime, but I have to admit that my my favorite is chili and sea bass, but that's on the bad list. That's Why is that bad to eat chili and sea bass? Chili and sea bass is overfished, and so that's one you want to avoid. There are all kinds. But of what does overfished mean? I mean, I mean you're taking it out more rapidly than they can replenish Well, I'm themselves. only taking one dinner every month. <laughs> but, that, but, but so with jellies, though, these are really... Uh, well, maybe we, people don't like them, so there's plenty they, of them. You, but you can get, you can get to like these. They're, you know, they're, they're one of the things that we have to do is to diversify our palate for seafood because yes. we, we tend to, to like only a few things. We like shrimp, we like salmon, we like tuna. Salmon? Is yeah. that an endangered species too? No, but, but we uh, have to learn how to farm some of these because two-thirds of all fish stocks are overfished. We have to learn how to farm the sea. The demand for seafood is growing more rapidly than population, and this is where California could play a leadership role. That report you showed in segment one, you know, we import 91% of all the seafood that we consume. Most of it comes from Asia, more than half of it is farm grown, and yet we don't produce, we produce less than 5% in the United States. But we, we have huge farmlands producing fruits and vegetables, that's, that's what we do. That's true, 
and we export that stuff. Yes, and, and we could do the same with, with aquaculture, far, farm-raised fish, and that, that California grown could apply to seafood. Oh, I see. So we could, this is a whole other industry. It's a whole other industry. In California, farming fish, That's including right. jellies, but maybe <laughs> chili and sea bass as no, well? No, not, no, no, no chili not we would We would only raise native species, and you could combine the fin fish with shellfish and also with some algae. And, and fish the, is very healthy, is it it's not? A, it's a, the most healthy source of protein that you can find. And it doesn't take any water either, like agriculture on land. Why, don't the fish drink while they're, they're in the... <laughs> they're, they're swimming around in salt. It doesn't require any fresh water. Any fresh... No. That, ah. When you bring them ashore, there's, there's some processing, so a little bit of fresh water, but unlike... So beef, these fish, uh, it's, they're saltwater fish. These are saltwater, huh. yes. Now, there are, there are some jellies that, that uh, live in fresh water. I see. So and they're, they're, do we eat those too, or...? Well, some of those could be could be, eaten. but the, you you really should try this though because I I, I promise you I I will, but I'm not going to do it now. And thank you for for uh, this. Uh, these are are just gorgeous, and you have a whole exhibit of these jellies currently at the at the aquarium. We have about a dozen different species and about a thousand individuals, and wow. uh, with different kinds of lighting. And as I mentioned, we're, we're going to begin to take the mo their motions, which are beautiful, translate them into music, and that they, since they have different motions, you'll be able to create a symphony of the jellies. Ah, I can see it and I can hear it. It's magic. <laughs> it will be magical. They are magical animals. So from jellies to globes, the aquarium encompasses uh, the whole breadth of... Uh, of, uh, of aquatic existence. And uses the arts and the humanities to make emotional connections to marine life and to marine issues so we will become better stewards of the ocean and marine life. Well said. And we'll be back with the rest of our show after these messages. <laughs> How do you like your chances the rest of the way? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee, freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember. Polly's, 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own my own store. I came to the United States and I worked hard as a tailor. Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. Italy's a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Bellflower, Long Beach. When you have enough internet speed for everyone in your home, mom can video chat with grandma. Your daughter can check her favorite sites. Your son can conquer the galaxy. And you'll still have enough bandwidth to conquer your first warrior pose. Get internet speed starting at 60 megabits per second with Charter Spectrum. Where will it take you? We're back with Jerry Schubel, President and CEO of the Aquarium. What are your plans and thoughts for the future? Uh, the Aquarium has been around now, what, 10 years or so? And it opened in 1998. 98. So uh, where do you see it going? Well, I, I don't think there's any limit. Uh, so we're going to continue to grow the institution programmatically to continue to use technology and media 
to reach out to more people, telling these big important stories, involving the public in, in the issues, what needs to be done. And, and our hope is you know, this will be some, so important and so compelling that we will need to expand the footprint physically. Wow. Well, I know in the summer particularly, you have busloads of kids coming, and I'm always struck by the energy and enthusiasm of these kids. And many have, have not had occasion to visit the beach or the ocean, and, and they're getting this all for the first time. No, that, that's right. We get about 200,000 school kids every year who come in yellow buses, and many of those we support with scholarships because they come from Title I schools, so they can't afford admission. We even pay for the buses. And it's, for some of them, it's the first time they've ever seen marine life or been anywhere near the ocean. Amazing, amazing. Well, that, that's, that's wonderful. And uh, congratulations to you. I understand you received the Conservator of the Year Award from the Bolsa Chica Conservancy. So congratulations on that recognition. Thank you. I think it's more recognition of the aquarium and all of the things it does to promote conservation. because. We, we've never needed conservation more than we do now, but it has to be a different kind, taken to a different level with bold new moves, and the aquarium really does that. It reframes the relationship of people with the ocean, with the earth, and asks what kind of a future do we want to create and what will it take to get there. And I know you have a top-notch staff assisting you. In we have a great staff. Efforts. Yes, we do. Before you came to the aquarium, you were the New, New England Aquarium, and I know in Boston, legal seafood is uh, quite popular. And the CEO, Roger Berkowitz, was on the board there. And here we have uh, Sam King of King Seafood on our, our board. And I think uh, Sam King is a, a great advocate for sustainable seafood and marine life. And his restaurants are wonderful if you like seafood, which is health. You know, you do yourself a favor by eating seafood. It's healthy and... Uh, Best uh, source of protein there is. You know, their medical wow. advice is we should eat seafood twice a week. Wow. And particularly eat, eating seafood that's high in omega-3 oils at any age or stage of life, it's very important to good health. Well, Jerry, let's get up close and personal with you for a moment. You're a Ph.D. You were at Stony Brook in academia, as I was at Long Beach State without a Ph.D., a J.D., for 35 years. Uh, now you've been on the aquarium side at New England and here. Uh, any favorite uh, career choices? I wouldn't trade any part of it, and I, I think... If I hadn't spent uh, all those years in academia making contacts with scientists and having those partnerships, it would be difficult to do many of the kinds of things that we do because we rely upon scientists in universities in this state and across this country to put together every program that we do. So I would so someone in your position with this type of aquarium, you need to be able to relate, as you just said, to, to the scientific community, but also... You're in marketing and, and selling, and you need to uh, get people through the door, and you have to have uh, the talent and the ability to attract staff that, that do both of that. And we have a very good staff. Now, it's, it's a very successful aquarium uh, as, as a business, and while we're a not-for-profit institution, we run it more like a for-profit. We have a lean staff, and we hustle with all of our programs, and it's been very successful. Uh, I know that you have divers that either volunteer their time or in some cases are paid and they come down and they clean the tanks and they interact with the fish. And the, the public loves what those divers do and we, in addition to cleaning the tanks we have the largest research diver program of any aquarium in the country. So they go out and, and they help get, gather data for state and federal agencies on what's happening to our local environments and marine life. And one little factoid that I read in preparation for the interview, that the, the great blue whales are the largest mammals in the world. Correct. And uh, although they're not in the aquarium, they swim offshore. Right. They try and get cl as close as they can, consistent with their comfort level. And we've, we've <laughs> got a, f a female blue whale hanging from the, the ceiling in the Great Hall at the aquarium in her calf. Donated by, Con e by right. uh, Southern, Southern California Southern, Edison. Right. What's the name of the it, whale? It, it, the name is Eddie and Son. Eddie Son. So, uh, <laughs> and, and we also work with uh, 
the uh, Harbor Breeze cruises on whale watch cruises, so we provide the naturalist. And it, the, the whale watching has really been great. Whale populations are increasing right. in numbers, uh, the diversity that we see. and The thought occurs to me that, that the footprint of the aquarium extends way beyond the aquarium. Oh, it does. And uh, as I say, with, with, with Science on a Sphere, we get to 110 different institutions around, around the world. Some of our programs are shown in Japan, in Mexico, in China. Um, and we also do other broadcasts that reach So folks, we have a world-class aquarium right here in town. I think we all to take a moment to appreciate that fact. And uh, we'll be back with the remaining portions of our show after these messages. <music> Bill Trainees mixes California style with continental cuisine that includes fresh seafood from around the world. Since Bill is the chef, the menu has a wide variety of pastas, salads, soups, and appetizers that feature his unique personal touch. And the Italian-American signature dishes are simply beyond delicious. You never know who you're going to run into at Trainees, from the famous sports legends on the Wall of Fame to local celebrities having a drink at the bar. For the best fine dining experience, visit Bill Trainees. At Performance Plus Tire, you'll find we carry Toyo tires. For over 50 years, Toyo has been a world leader in the development of high-quality tires. Optimum performance, safety, and a comfortable ride. That's what makes Toyo tires great. And now come into Performance Plus Tire for a great deal on these Toyo tires. Proxies ST, Open Country AT, and Proxies 4. Toyo tires, driven to perform. Come in today and we'll install new Toyo tires on your vehicle while you wait. Performance Plus Tire on Cherry Avenue, one mile north of the 405 in Long Beach. There's a world of opportunity available through the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. Would you like to move ahead in the field of human resources and personnel management? Sign up for the Human Resources Management Certificate Program. You'll learn how to expand your knowledge and skills and advance in this dynamic industry. For more information, contact the College of Continuing and Professional Education at Cal State Long Beach. You've been planning this moment for a long time. It couldn't be a more perfect moment. And you have the perfect ring that will tell her, I want to love you forever. But nothing is perfect. Don't listen to that guy. He got the ring at McCarty's. McCarty's yes. makes a moment. I think Long Beach is very fortunate to have an aquarium of the caliber of our Aquarium of the Pacific and someone of the caliber of our guest, Jerry Schubel, leading it and his top-notch staff. I encourage you over the summer, or any time for that matter, to visit the aquarium. Consider becoming a member, if you haven't already, and supporting this uh, uh, nationally and internationally recognized uh, asset. So, Jerry... Uh, well, our t thank you, and, and all of us at the aquarium feel very fortunate that we're in Long Beach, one of the great port cities of the world, and in the heart of the Southern California urban ocean, it gives us the opportunity and the responsibility to talk about this changing relationship of people with the ocean and marine life. Beautifully said, and thank you, Jerry, again for joining us here on Straight Talk. Thank you, Art. And thank you at home for being our guest. Please be with us next week for the next edition of our show. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by the Port of Long Beach, the Press-Telegram, and Scan Health Plan. And remember, Straight Talk is viewable 24-7 at straighttalktv.com. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today.